in our recent times, there's this pull where God is saying, you guys need to come back to what was the most important thing, and that is to look at within you, right? Um, <clears throat> and so I feel this shift where people are discovering um, and sensing the desire and need to look within. And so those senses, those extra senses you were describing there, I think are very key to this uh, time in humanity where uh, we're seeing more and more people wanting to get in touch or needing to get in touch with who they are. And so looking within and having that sense of balance. So what does balance mean for me rather than what does balance mean for a community? Because that's very different. Um, and I really appreciate that that concept that you shared there um, because I think it is a com complex um, and I think it's a complex concept to grasp. And I think because of the way that we've been living for so long, it's made it complex. We seem so far removed from who we are because we've attached to so many external things and so many external roles. And, and like you mentioned about the knowledge um, aspect of that. Um, it was mind blowing for me as uh, I was reading through Eckhart Tolle's uh, book and to realize I just, you know, when I read that line about the, the verse he shares from the Bible about the tree of good and evil, um, and he shares about how knowledge can corrupt. And I really had to sit with that and meditate on that. And what does that mean? Because for so long I was just like, you know, it's about choice, right? It's about knowing what is right and knowing what's wrong and not doing those things. But I think it's also more than that. And what we're not paying attention to is how our brain processes information and the way in which we actually have a choice in which information we hold on to and make it our holy grail and which information we actually let go of and go, nah, that's that's not what I think, not what I believe. Um, and so what we're doing is often going to our um, psychological or neurological function for answers for life and not tapping into our essence deep within us that doesn't require the mind to always be thinking and analyzing because the mind has limits and it has restrictions in, in terms of how it analyzes information and how it processes and then passes the information and distributes it to the different spheres of the brain. And the different spheres of the brain have their capacity within certain restrictions again, in terms of how they're going to store information, how that information then is utilized in, in later need, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting that we will often gather information and be like, oh, like I remember for myself, for example, so many times I would read a book and get super excited about all the concepts shared and be like, this is it. This is how I'm to live my life. This is going to make me. And then you go to the next book and you're like, oh, the last book didn't say about this. And oh, and so, you know, as I began to read more and more, I realized actually all the books have something great to say and there's an essence of truth in all of them. But at the end of the day, it's about who you as a person believe and the values you cultivate and focus on that then will um, cause you to accumulate the knowledge that you feel serves the purpose you were born to do. Mm -hmm. I truly mm -hmm. believe that. Uh, because what's the purpose of uh, acquiring knowledge if we're not going to use the knowledge, right? And so the knowledge is there to be used for us to serve, whether we serve ourselves or serve others, but it has a, it should have a transitional purpose in that it's not just being stored, but it's actually being in, put into practice. And knowledge changes us. As you think about things that you've read or you think about experiences you've had and you're meditating and, you know, contemplating on those things, it changes not only the brain and the function, but it changes the mood, it changes the behavior that then we put out. And so knowledge has the power to corrupt and has the power to also build. Um, and so how we choose knowledge and how we, what we choose to expose ourselves to is really important. So that was for me really striking, like, oh my goodness, I never actually realized that it's how knowledge is disseminated. How is knowledge pulled apart and utilized? How is it thought of? How am I going back to the knowledge that I've acquired and putting it into practice? Because I can use it for good and I can use it for evil. It's just like a, you know, a weapon. You can choose to do good with it and you can choose to do terrible with it. And so I just thought that was incredibly, um, you know, just an aha moment for me as I was reading through that and going, oh, I would need to be more careful what I expose myself to, what I mm. allow my brain to see, because the brain only has, you know, certain capacities. And so it will replay 
right? It replays the things that I'm exposing myself to. And eventually over time, within the subconscious mind, it will think back on those things when difficult situations arise or I'm finding myself in a um, really difficult um, maybe decision-making process. And so all the emotions, all the things I've cultivated, everything I've put in is then going to rise to the surface and it's now fighting for me to acknowledge as it as truth or not truth. So knowledge is not only power, but it can also be destructive. It's so cool that, you know, to realize that concept of how do we filter through knowledge and select the knowledge that will serve us?